Hi, it's Will from StormyCastle.com, and here in YouTube you know me is what? Epic Fantasy, that's right. And this is my latest tutorial, a camera obscura. What does that mean, right? You ever heard of a camera obscura? Um, it's Latin for dark chamber, and it is actually something that goes way back in time, all the way to antiquity, and is a precursor to cameras and photography. Let me show you the project, right here. There you go, a camera obscura. Get a little lens in there, and you can actually do this with a pinhole. But um, I use a lens, and you look in here, and you will actually see images. Um, they did a lot of different one, types of this, and in the Victorian era, they even did full rooms where they used a pinhole in a room, and you could go inside the room and see an image project projected on a wall. Really fascinating stuff. We use the lens from one of these old telescopes. A lot of people have these $20 telescopes you can get cheaply at dollar stores sometimes. And if you're not using it anymore, you might want to consider taking the lens off and using it for your camera obscura. Okay, let's take a look inside my camera obscura right here. Looks good, right? Kind of got an old Victorian feel to it. And uh, just looking out the window of my house. See this? <laughs> kind of neat, right? Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, rattle boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so this is how it works. Really, really simple. You make a box, and I'm making a box specific to the size of my lens and the focal length of my lens. But there's a lens right here. The light travels down this path, bounces off a mirror up to your tracing paper or wax paper where the image is displayed. Simple as that. And you're going to make your box depending on the focal length of your lens. I'll tell you more about that. So grab your old telescope, take the lens off, and most of these scopes the lens just unscrews like this. So you can take that right out and unscrew that lens. Clean it up. So now let's examine, let's figure out the focal length of your lens. You need a bulb, just a plain bulb without a shade on it. It can be a regular bulb, it can be one of those um, spiral fluorescent bulbs, it doesn't matter. And hold it up against the wall like this. And see the image of the bulb showing? Watch. And notice how it's fuzzy and then it gets very sharp and you can see it like a perfect image of a bulb. That's important. That tells you the focal length. So with a yardstick or some kind of a measuring stick, move the lens like this until it becomes nice and sharp. And then right there, that is your focal length. The center of that lens to the wall. And for mine, it's 16 inches. So we need to build a box that's 16 inches from the lens, bouncing, and then to this surface right there. 16 inches. And we'll make it so we get a little bit of adjustment in it. That'll be fine. So we also need a mirror. What have you got for a mirror? I'm using this old hand mirror, popping it right out of the handle, and I'm gonna use that. Oh, who's that? So clean that up. So something like this. So make yourself a box. It's really, really quite simple. This is how I did it. My box is, uh, let me see, I, I, I forget the dimensions. But it's eight inches by eight inches, and I think that's 16 inches long, although that, it's not because of the same thing. But here's the side of it. See the mirror's gonna be there? Right like this. So I'm just making a box. Put the back on it. Now a couple of stands to hold our angled piece for our mirror. And you'll see what I mean right there because we're gonna put a, an angled piece of foam board in there, but we're gonna put a couple of stands on it so it, so it holds up, so it supports it. You can call those supports.
You know, if you make this project, be sure to send me a picture. You're going to really enjoy it. This is kind of fun. Send me a picture. I will send you a certificate of contribution. So see our 45 degree angle piece just like that. The mirror is going to go on that. You can understand how this goes because of the diagram I, I showed you, right? Now we need a piece in the front for the, our lens. And we're not going to glue this in now because we want to be able to adjust it back and forth a little bit an inch here or there to make sure our image is a nice sharp focus. So we have a little bit of leeway. But right there at that center of that X, we're going to mount our, our lens. And make sure you get this lens the correct way because there is a front and a back. So keep it labeled so you know which way is the front and the back of that lens. Inside this camera obscura is just like inside the telescope. There you go. You can glue that in. And then glue your mirror in place. You know, I made a prototype of this uh, project because I wasn't sure it was going to work or how it was going to work. So I just quickly put one together and it worked perfectly. I was like, wow, really kind of neat. So then I went ahead and built this one, this one for you to observe and watch uh, how to make it. And then you cut yourself a rectangular hole for the image on the top piece. Like that, and make sure it lines up with your mirror and everything's at the right angle so the line of um, light comes straight through. And an important thing about something like this, if you're gonna be observing and looking at it, uh, that you need darkness around the image for, for um, contrast so you can see it well. So build yourself a little um, structure like this to put on top of there. Don't glue it on yet, but you put that on top of there so now it's dark in there and you'll be able to see the image much, much better. So now you get a couple of options here. Try a few different things. Typically, regular printer paper is too thick for this. Tracing paper works really well for this, but you might have to experiment a little bit. I also tried wax paper. Wax paper works, but I had to use two sheets of it. One sheet wasn't enough. I put a second sheet of wax paper on, it was perfect. You got a nice image on this. So once you got that right, you test it real quick. You see you got a nice image that shows up well you can tape it down. And, you know, a camera obscura, and then you would tape or glue on your shroud. I guess we can call this a shroud to keep it in darkness. See, there you go. Let's take a look at it. There's another set. The same spot, but there's no kids walking. See? So this is another, another video that I shot. It works really good. The kids are all on the bus. <laughs> So now we, we, move the, we would move that back and forth and experiment with, with it, the lens to make sure we got it in the right spot with the top on it and it looks good, the image is good, and then you glue it down because so now everything's locked in. And if you have this little um, dew cap on your telescope, you might want to put that on too. Now an important thing about the camera obscura is um, you don't want any light to get inside. It'll help to keep it nice and dark inside that box. So seal any of the cracks or edges or um, joints. I used um, electrical, white electrical tape. You can use black electrical tape, anything to seal it. And then I added a few ornaments just for fun to make it look a little more Victorian. See some metal banding. And I, I, you, could, you could go ahead and paint your camera obscura. I, I didn't paint mine, I just painted the banding. <coughs> but make sure you seal everything so darkness, so light doesn't get in, and you get to go. And I wanted to show you one more thing. I started saying it before, but you can actually use a camera obscura to draw with. You know, there's a lot of speculation about artists used to use camera obscuras to do their paintings and stuff like that. Um, so let, let me show you how to do that. It'll be, it's a little, little tiny bit different, but it's kind of neat. So yeah, well, there's the completed camera obscura, and I printed up some Victorian letters there. Look, kind of looks kind of neat. Camera obscura. There you go. So let me show you now if you want to use it to draw. Get yourself, cut yourself a piece of Lexan or plexiglass, preferable over glass, just for safety, and tape that down to your portal. 
And now you can put tracing paper on top of that and draw right on the tracing paper with your images. And I'll show you just a quick look. See, now the, as the image shows up, you can draw on it. It's kind of like making a copy. Make sure you use something to keep a lot of this in darkness so you can see it better. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.